here we go again. Oh my goodness. So I'm gonna be using the word white people uh, throughout this video and I want you to understand I don't mean this for all white people. That's not what I mean. I'm talking about a select group within white people. That's what I want to say. Because I know some of y'all can be a little bit sensitive when it comes to the W word. Having said that, um, here we go again. I, I, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, but seeing this victimhood complex on white people within the Republican Party, it's it is absolutely delicious. It's absolutely amazing because I want, can we just, you know, call a spade a spade? Um, when it comes to a white victim, um, the only group of people who make this a race play are white people, okay? Can we just call it, call it what it is? When it comes to a white victim and a non-black uh, attacker, white people scream, oh, this is anti-white racism. It's anti-white racism. Are you ready for the flip side? When there's a black attacker or a black victim and a white attacker, white people make that about race. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but they're obsessed with race, okay? No, you won't hear black people as a community talk about, oh, that's racist, that's racist. You won't have it. White liberals, who say it on the other side? White Republicans. <laughs> They're the ones constantly making this about race. Even if we go back, the race card, right? Who do you think came up with the race card? Black people didn't come up with the race card. It was actually a white person to criticize Abraham Lincoln doing the Emancipation Proclamation. That's what, that's what it was about. They were criticizing him, talking about, hey, the only way you win this is through, you know, trying to do the race card of, you know, freeing the blacks. So uh, everything, about the history of this country, everything about this group of people, once again, not all, has to deal with race. That's what it has to deal with. Black people just wanted to, hey, we just wanted to work and get along to get along, right? That's it. There was one group of people that wanted to make it about race. That's, that's it. That's how, it's, that's how it's been. That's how it always is. So I find it humorous, bro. I find it absolutely it tickles me, bro, when I see white people talking about, this is anti-white racism. We need a white organization to protect us. Protect you from who? Other white people? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, right? I just, are you, are you guys crazy? You guys have to be delusional. Because I find it hilarious where you want to make black people the boogeyman, like, we're in the middle of a Ukraine war between two white people, but you want to talk about black on black crime? What? 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 Like, I just, this is, it's mind blowing, bro. It's honestly mind blowing. And this leads us to this, this story that is running rampant among, you know, white conservatives, among white people. And it's nothing more than, than fear propaganda. What we know is nothing about the story. Who I'm referring to is this kid named Jonathan Lewis. He was 17. He's no longer here with us. And there's a video that's been circulating that is having people trying to create narratives from it. Now, the only thing we know, which is we don't even know it to be accurate, is from the GoFundMe for this kid. Like the parents are saying, jo Jonathan was trying to stand up for somebody and you know, because he was trying to stand up for somebody, now he's no longer with us. It's like, okay, I get that's a story, right? And given as far as the victim narrative of these group of people and what we've seen before, once again, we're just, I'm just coming off of a story about Douglas Mackey. That's what we're coming off with. Guy did the crime and he's crime victim. We're coming off of that from Ashley Babbitt. Woman did the crime, the crime victim. So, we're coming off of a whole bunch of stories of people who are guilty, but they're trying to be, you know, presented in some type of martyr light, in some type of, oh, woe is me, this is horrible. So, it's, it's, so when I hear like a Jonathan Lewis story, I find it very, very,
very unlikely, okay, that a group of teenagers just started beating this kid up because he was trying to defend a friend. Very unlikely, okay? Extremely unlikely. This, once again, as I said, post-traumatic slave master syndrome. These mofos think, these mofos think of themselves as, you know, the end-all be-all, right? So if anything happens to them, well, someone, has, someone else has to be wrong. The victim mindset with their internal victims. So it's not that, hey, Jonathan Lewis may have said something to one of the kids and, you know, gotten the whole kids, you know, upset at him. It's not that Jonathan Lewis could have done something to one of the kids and upset at the entire group. It's not that Jonathan Lewis is ever in the, in the blame. That's, that doesn't even cross their mind. In their mind, they're innocent. It's, oh, that's how they view themselves. And that's how they've been portrayed throughout history, mind you. Okay, so that goes in line with the post-traumatic slave master syndrome, which was what they suffer from. We don't know anything about this story. We have a video that's circulating that is being weaponized by racists. That's what is being done. And it's being weaponized in order to galvanize the idiots within the base. There are a bunch of simpletons within the base, as we can see from January 6. So you have to understand, black people, please, please be cautious. Please be cautious because you're dealing with a low um, IQ group of people who are easily manipulated, easily manipulated into doing foolish, foolish activities, okay, and acting in foolish behaviors that only harm themselves. And if only they can, you know, I don't know, if, if, you know, get their head out of their, their rectums, they would see that, hey, you're being, you're being got. Even in the video, mind you, listen to me. Even in the video, you can see there are black teens who are trying to help the white kid. They're trying to defend him from the attackers. But yet, you want to know how these racists try to play it as? Oh, look at the black kids uh, going after little Timmy. This is what they want us to be. They, they want us to accept this, that this is how we should be treated. And I'm just like... Are you guys not even watching the video? Have you guys been so freaking conditioned and propagandized that you're not even looking at what your eyes are showing you that black kids were actually trying to help this kid? That black youths, black teens were actually trying to defend and get the attackers off of him. That you're so filled with hatred, so, so much animosity for a group of people who have never done you any wrong. Never done you any wrong. You took us from our homeland, you placed us here, and then you want to treat us like trash. And all throughout this time, all the black people have tried to do is just like, hey, we, we just want to live. Hey, we just want to get alone. Hey, we just want a community. Hey, we just, want to, <laughs> we just want to work. And you've done everything in your power. This lineage of evil has done everything in their power to subjugate, oppress, and destroy just as the scripture says, kill, steal, and destroy. And that's what they've tried to do at every single front. To be aware of the, the, the race baiting that is actually going on. And that's what this is. It's race baiting. That's what the whole terms that they misuse. Like even with, as I said earlier in the video, when it comes to the race card. They have taken these words and done the same thing that they accuse the liberals of doing, right? They want to talk about, oh, the liberals want to talk about what is a woman? You know, a man and a woman are different. I'm like, yo, you've done the same thing with woke. You've done the same thing with the race card. You've done the same thing with black on black crime. You've managed to take these words and weaponize them for your own, you know, agenda. And that agenda just always, nine out of 10, has to deal with black people who are just like, hey, we don't own CNN. We don't own Fox News. We don't even have a massive representation on these networks, much less anyone who's representing us. But somehow, some way, it falls right back on our lap. And I, for one, am sick and tired of it, bruh. I'm for one sick and tired of it. I'm tired of you trying to use me as a scapegoat. Of you trying to use black people as a scapegoat. Yo, lift yourself up by the bootstrap. How about that? Can y'all do that? And I find it hilarious when it comes to the, to the, to the schizophrenic bipolarness of the white conservative. Because at one point in time, they want to say, hey, we're all Americans, okay? There is no black crime. There is no white crime. There is no Asian crime. There's just crime. And in a fraction of a second, all of that goes out the window. 
All of that goes out the window. And now you see, oh, look, this is, this is anti-white crime. Two white teen, two, a white kid was attacked by a bunch of black kids. And it's like, wait, I thought we were all Americans. I thought that's what it was. And you see how quick they switch up on you. And this just goes to show you that there, there, there is a, a wickedness there. There is a evil, evil wickedness that's still present that I think, I would argue, that stems from a lineage of wickedness that they have yet to get out of their gene pool, okay? They have yet to, to address the wickedness of the nature that some of them have. And, and, you know, I would say it's not even their fault because you have evil begetting evil that begets evil that begets evil. So there is no break to the cycle. It's a continuous loop until someone breaks it. So um, this story, I'll follow up with it, okay? But for people trying to make nothing, you know, out of, you know trying to make something out of nothing, I think that's, I think that's wickedness because it's just causing division. The same division that they constantly want to accuse the Democrats of causing. You're causing division. I'm like, you guys are both wicked, wicked people. Anyways, guys, that's the video. Let me know what you guys think. Where's the night bleed? Lucas, Lucas, Lucas. He is, okay? Look at the video, all right? That's what they're doing. And they want us to be, they want us to be targeted, all right? It's, it's the little Timmy syndrome. It's, that's what's happening in real life. We got to protect ourselves. Um, or if you haven't believed, no. No, uh, uh, <laughs> no, Bubba. You're, you're not being targeted, okay? Black people aren't targeting you. They care nothing about you. They're just trying to live their lives. That's it. And yet somehow, some way, you constantly find a way to inject us in every one of your trivial problems. Okay? Somehow, some way, <laughs> uh, you know, you constantly find a way to be a victim and to blame everyone else for your problems. Just is what it is. Um, if you happen to disagree with the video, you're more than welcome to call in during District Day, which is typically held Friday through Sunday. There'll be a number on screen you call in. We duke it out. Either or, Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, keep it respectful. Um, subscribe. Oh, that fun stuff. Till next time, guys. Be amazing. Post-traumatic slave master syndrome.